Dave, thanks so much for offering to moderate and yeah. obviously you're sort of part of the, the chat as well yes. because you are a VC at G Adventures. Yeah. Um, but I did reach out to you because you were on my journalist <laughs> yes. list and uh, I know you're saying that you work for CNET and Bloomberg. So I'm fascinated, being a small journalist myself, what what, what uh, made you take that leap and, and how did it happen? And mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure it's a great story. I, well, yes, it's a thrill ride, a power mad thrill ride. Um, well, I started out, you know, on the technology side um, and uh, started writing uh, sort of heavily circa 2003, give or take, uh, and was at the time working for Comdex, if you remember the trade show. Uh, yeah, so I'm dating myself. Uh, it was the big, you know, it was sort of before CES and all those things. And, um, uh, you know, I was, I, was a, I was a decent writer, uh, not great, um, but I got caught in the wave of really having to crank out a lot of material. And so what ended up happening was that I really got good at it, right? I was really able to uh, very quickly analyze stuff. Um, and uh, what I sort of focused on was how do you take technical concepts and make them consumable for other people? Um, because that was a lot of my, my day job. Um, and so from there, you know, so I spent... Uh, uh, then I started a company uh, where, um, you know, the early days of blogging and such, sort of 2005, 2006, you know, it was starting, you know, things had caught on. It was the easiest way to promote, uh, was to write a lot of content. And because I could bang it out and I had, had perspectives, um, I was able to score some pretty good gigs. So I wrote a lot for InfoWorld, a lot for CNET for, for years, for CNET and ZDNet and... Uh, um, Got IBM Developer Works, and you know, just mean pretty much all of them at any given time. And then, uh, then I switched to Bloomberg, which was a big score. Um, and uh, while I was doing that, I went to. That's when I started my VC sort of journey, coming out of an entrepreneurship. I started. Uh, back uh, roughly 2012 um, in venture and um, started writing a little bit less primarily because I was working in an adventure organization that really didn't want me talking about stuff that we were working on. Um, and so it calmed down my stuff. And then I started writing about a lot more entertaining things, quite frankly, you know, stuff like, you know, going on a journey of a Fitbit um, and, you know, things like, you know, I have a, a friend in a band who, who everybody in the band didn't live in the same place, and but Yahoo made everyone come in. So it was stuff like that. Um, and so, you know, I was trying to, you know, apply the lens that I had seen of um, kind of tech journalism to other areas. And, uh, and then since then, I still write a lot of other stuff that, uh, and I participate in things that you know, will never be seen. <laughs> and, and does it feel better to be a VC, or would you prefer to be, go back and be a journalist? Uh, you know, I don't type as fast as I used to. I used to have that 40s typist kind of, you know. <laughs> uh, so that's, kind of, that's a little bit less. Um, you know, a lot of the skills are the same. A lot of it is very quick analysis, uh, forming an opinion very quickly, um, being able to rationalize a thought process very quickly. Um, um, I guess the difference is that uh, I don't have to write the reports that I did previously. So, you know, we operate a little bit differently in the Valley. We speak in PowerPoint in the venture world. Um, and in, in the journalism world, you actually have to write the stuff down. Um, so it's, it's always funny because I will write a pitch and I'll actually write it. And, you know, the rest of my team will look at me like I'm crazy. Like, did you, why did you not do this in PowerPoint? But, you know, that's the, the process that you get to the thought, you know. And, and so um, as a journalist, you know, you got to bang this stuff out. You got to keep going. You got to iterate. Um, and it helps make a cohesive uh, thought, more cohesive if possible. And I, I would imagine, and this is just my own fantasy from my, my seat, is that being a journalist, you really do, no matter what you're writing about, you have to engage people in some way. And so I would imagine that would be really helpful as a VC, that you have those, you've yeah. obviously got those skills. Yeah, I mean, I think being able to interview someone is sort of the key thing. You know, we always talk about, and you read a lot about how the uh, founders really matter and these kinds of things. And there's a, you know, in many ways, the Valley got sort of uh, has a hangover of the cult of the founder at the moment, as we've seen with a lot of companies that have uh, gone a little bit sideways. Um, and so, you know, the ability to interview somebody, the ability to sort of, you know, understand nuances and those kinds of things really do come from the journalism background, because a lot of it is you're trying to parse if somebody is lying or not lying. Let's, let's use the, what's the uh, alternative facts? How, how dare you? Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what we need to know. It's like, I need to know if this guy is full of shit, because especially if I'm going to give him a bunch of money. Um, I also, you know, and so there's a lot of those skills get put to use, you know, so for better or worse, it's analysis at a different scale, and we're trying to get to a different result. I'm trying to decide, do we want to put money into this? Do we think this is a good way to go uh, versus do I think this is a good story? But the story does matter. I mean, this is what I, I focus on with all of my companies that I'm working on now. That story matters. And if you don't tell me a good story and you can't get to that story, I don't think you have a company, right? And tell me what your secret um, is in sussing out where, whether or not there's any BS to be smelled. 
Uh, you know, I, I don't know that there's any one specific secret. A lot of it is, is spending time um, with the people involved. And there's obviously you can do a lot of technical diligence um, and figure out, you know, we, we typically, you know, what I, what I learned going back several years is we're testing for market feasibility, technical feasibility, and then founder feasibility. Um, some of that is, you know, the ability to run through walls. Um, but, you know, you need to be sort of um, pragmatic as well. Um, and so... Interestingly, now at GE, um, we tend to see a lot of older entrepreneurs, which is very different. Uh, I spent a lot of time doing diligence for a bunch of, uh, of, of funds and spending a lot of time with guys like True, who do Seed. Um, and I'm looking and I'm like, I'm literally double your age. This is freaking me out. And I'm not that old. Uh, and and, and uh, yeah, now I see, you know, I see adults, right? And so it's a very different sort of lens that, that you put on the discussion. And so... Sadly, there's no any one single trait. The biggest thing that I think we look for is like, do I want to sit in a room? If everything goes to hell, do I want to be in a room with this person? Uh, oh, okay. And it's because it's all going to go wrong. There's no company that goes right, you know, even 50% of the time. Um, and so, for be- lack of a better word, you know, character. Do we do we feel like this character is something that we we feel good about? I've noticed in the valley that there's a lot of hot air, and everyone talks a good talk. Um, but and I've learned uh, that old expression: "What is it? Actions speak louder than words." Yeah. That um, the best way is just to watch how a person acts, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it shows up pretty quickly. It does. I think. I think you know the funny thing is from the venture perspective, um, uh, coming from an entrepreneurial and op- an operator background, uh, I think a lot of investors pay lip service to how hard, yeah, it's hard to do it. It is friggin' hard to build a company and take a company from, from end to end and get it, you know, you, you think, in, in typically you see people are like, ah, I gotta get funds, I gotta get funded. Well, that's barely the, that's barely the start of it. Like, once you get the money, then it gets real. Um, and I think uh, uh, the hot air thing is very real and for better or worse, media has made it easier. Uh, you know, I, I sit around, you go to a coffee shop and here's what I talk about blockchain and you just think, Jesus, this, please make this end, you know? So it's, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of that. In, in Ireland and the UK, we'd say that's wanking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of wanking. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, um, you've already had me giggling, but I'd love to hear a funny story that may have happened to you as an investor. You know, I had, a, I had a, my, probably my, my uh, I, was in a, I was on a board of a company that was going a little bit sideways. And um, one, I was in Xi'an, China. Why not? You know, I was, I was, I had like four days, I hadn't slept for four days. And if you get to Xi'an, it's pretty hard. It's where the terracotta warriors are. It's a very cool, crazy place. They make a super spicy noodle they're famous for. Um, and yeah, I, I, I couldn't sleep. I'd been up for days, right? I, and I run. So I was running incessantly. This in the air, it's not one of those places where you go running because the, uh, the air quality is not great. Uh, but I got an email from one of these guys, one of the guys who was an, in, an investor, an angel in the company. And he said, you know, can you call me right away? I'm in China. It's four o'clock in the morning. What do I care? I'll call him. It's like noon, right? It's Seattle or somewhere. I call. So I call him, and he said, "Oh, I didn't expect you to call me." So I, I thought immediately we got a problem here, and uh, proceeds to tell me how the CEO is doing a bad job and this and that. And uh, I said, "You know, my only response was nobody likes a coup," and that was the. Uh, highlight. So you know, I went out and I thought, "Boy, this is terrible," uh, and I went out and got a bowl of spicy noodles and. <laughs> And that was the end of my day. At the end. There's a lot of them. I mean, you, the, the, uh, you, for better or worse, you know, you, you've um, you see a lot of things, uh, and you want it all to be awesome, and you want to be excited about it. And not always is. Got to got to try to, you know, make it better um, and be a little bit more realistic. Now that I whatever you know, I'm 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 older in age. Like I can be slightly more zen about it than than I was. Uh, but it ain't easy. However, I think that the challenges um, and getting through those challenges and, and the difficult um, issues and startups um, m- makes you more appreciative of the good times, correct? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no question. And it also. It was all like. Yeah, it. it vanilla, wouldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I absolutely think you see a lot of the uh, sort of. Um, Manifestation of that is why you see people work together a lot of the years and a lot of different groups in the same networks that run together. Yeah. Um, e, <laughs> shared suffering, you know, if you will. Uh, you know, it, 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 uh, it what's it the, the it does, <laughs> yeah, you need that. Uh, and um, without it, it's really hard to know h- how to go, right? And so um, it's, uh, it's all part of the game. Well, it's fantastic to have you as a VC and um, wonderful that you've come tonight and I really appreciate meeting you and hearing your story and um, looking forward to the panel. Thanks. I I hope they they can take a joke. Otherwise, this is just going to be a death march. (laughs) Thanks.